Why do Nightblades prefer leather armor? Because it's made of hide. What's going on YouTube? Today we've got a special video because we are back in our Tuesday vendor inside of the Infinite Archive, formerly known as the Endless Archive, inside of Apocrypha to go over what is in Fuller Ool's inventory. And I will tell you, spoiler, it's pretty good. And why it's good is because he's got an assortment of items that generally I say to you every week, if we hit these items, we are in for a banger. And this week, we're in for that banger because he's got some good stuff. And he starts us off with the Bog Blue Jasper's Fetish. Now, what these are are leads. And the beautiful thing about these is, is if you wanted to get what comes from the leads, for those of you who don't know, if you do leads in ESO, you get things. These specifically are tied to mythics. Uh, but they could be tied to other things such as mounts. They could be tied to things such as furnishings. But let's focus on what these ones are. Bog Blue Jasper's Fetish is from one of the number one mythics in the game, which is Harpooner's Kilt. Basically, for those of you who don't know, this is a best-in-slot mythic. For those of you who are doing things that you don't get hit a lot, but so you can deal a lot of damage. So trial content, certain types of four-man content. This is really one of the creme de la creme items. And to get that mythic you have to do some annoying leads and this is one of them because guess where this bad boy comes from the runes of mazatun final boss how many of you enjoy the runes of mazatun the answer is zero none of you do and if you do enjoy it no you don't enjoy it i'm fixing your mind right now it is one of the longest dungeons in eso and it just has never felt rewarding to do and getting leads from bosses is always painful and there is a shortcut way you can buy it this week, and that is by getting this lead right here. And even if you aren't interested in the Mythic, this is still a great way for me to highlight what I believe is one of the best in slot, if not one of the best, maybe even the number one Mythic in ESO for the type of content that it tries to do. Next, we have one of the more interesting Mythics that I think is really slept on in what it tries to do. But let's talk about why you may be considering getting this. So let's talk about the Mythic second. How you actually get this lead normally is you get Thieves Killed Troves in Galen. And when you have leads that require you to pick up things like that, it feels painful. So if you're interested in getting this lead, this is the best way to do it. Because you'll probably save more time running Infinite Archive and then doing it this way than you would ever trying to find that specific trove inside of Galen. And the reason for that is just because it's very hard to find the spawns for these types of things, especially if you're on console. But the actual heads and tails of the mythic are pretty interesting. And that is if you continuously sprint for one second, you gain the ability to pass through enemies. Enemies you pass through become charm for four seconds, removing their ability to attack or cast at you and towards you. Charming an enemy restores 678 magicka, stamina, and you heal for some health. Uh, charming an enemy removes you from stealth. It's one of those sets that a lot of people continue to experiment with, especially in the PvP setting. But also think too, mythics like this, I always feel, have a really interesting utilization for PvE content. And a lot of people would say, why? But if you're interested in doing you know, bulk quests, daily quests, trying to farm money, trying to farm a specific area, where say you're farming a public dungeon that requires you to go through different doors, and you just want to kill those public dungeon people to get the gold, to get the loot from them. You're not interested in killing the mobs generally on the way there. This could be a way for you to pass through and be able to successfully kind of skip over certain areas. Now, there's probably better ways you can do that with potentially vampire stealth that being stage four. But some people might not want to be a stage four vampire to do those types of things. So this could be an interesting kind of fill in for that. Is it the best way to do it? Probably not. But I think really its utilization is PvP for the obvious reasons that you can imagine based on what it does. Next, we have the Thurvican Mask, which I guarantee you I am not pronouncing correctly, so I'm only going to say it one time. Now, this is always a cool time for me to highlight exactly what we are looking at right now, and that is a bound monster set style page. Why would I encourage you to buy a bound style page? And that is because generally these things are worth multi-millions. And this is a great way, if you're interested in a cool-looking monster set helmet or shoulder, it rotates, you're able to get yourself a really unique-looking monster set. For example, the most valuable helmet-style page in the game is a monster set. And this is actually one that's worth a decent chunk of money. So if you're interested in not having to pay another player for it, 
or waiting for it to come into the store for you to be able to grind for it in the dungeon that it's attached to, 15k of uh, archival fortunes, not potentially a bad deal. And now we finally have some interesting maps to look at, and that is the Reach. So, for those of you who are looking and you're like, Jake, why should I be interested by a archival essay, the Reach treasure map? And that is because you could still sell the contents that you get from these treasure maps. And the sets that you're going to be getting from the Reach are actually pretty valuable for you to sell. But generally, it's not enough for me to really say, mm, this could potentially be a good buy for you. What is, though, is, is that the Reach also has the Ancestral Reach motifs. How you actually get those is pretty fascinating. So every time you open a chest, I would say you have a 20 to 30% chance to get a lead, which will give you the ability to get the Ancestral Reach motif. How it works generally is, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is that different zones have different treasure maps that are attached to those which have different loot pools, some of which contain leads for motifs that you can get and that you are able to sell once you dig them up. This is a really cool example of an ancestral reach one. Now, the reach ones are not as valuable as some of the other ones, uh, especially compared to like ancestral Daedric or even the ones from High Isle. It really pales in comparisons to those ones, unfortunately, uh, pretty much due to the fact that it's just been out longer and it just doesn't look as cool, but it still is a cool option. If you're thinking to yourself, you know, maybe I want to finish the reaches, uh, you know, sticker book, maybe you want to get, you know, some progress on that collection, see if I can roll for a little bit of money, not a bad option for you to do. So this next one is interesting too, and that is companion gear medium. So companion gear is one of the most valuable things in the game that you can purchase to deck out your companion. So when you're looking at things and you're thinking to yourself, man, if only there was a way I could save money, well, you can use your archival fortunes to save you some money, but these are non-tradable. So what you get is what you get. Somebody asked an interesting question about medium armor being the best armor, and this is a perfect time for me to address that. And I think it really boils down to what do you want a companion to do? And for most people, it's generally tanking. However, if you're interested in things such as healing or being able to do DPS, medium armor is probably the way for you to go. Next, we have our two books, which you're going to be able to read, put in your house if you're interested. But then we get into the collectible fragments and we've actually talked about these previously for example the cartographer's mask which is going to give you access to this nice here looking cartography outfit is very cheap to purchase on the ESO open market i do not encourage you to waste archival fortunes on it it's very simple to get we talked about it last week uh, the erroneous archive map we also talked about too i do not think it's worth spending archival fortunes to basically get a body painting body markings just isn't worth it to me. And then I also discourage you guys from ever buying tribute upgrade cards. For example, the reasoning is actually very simple. Unlike most card games, your opponents gets to use your upgraded cards anyway. So for me, it's not really worth upgrading cards because your opponent just gets access to the upgraded cards also. So the only benefit is really just collectibles, which is great, but it's not worth 4,000 archival fortunes. But everyone, let me know what you guys think in the comments below because this week is very interesting. And I also think the format of the archival vendor is very funny because it's like here are the best items and then it slowly gets worse <laughs> so it's like here's all the cool stuff and then here's all the stuff that's probably not as essential but you know maybe might be just a little bit of a talking point so let me know what you guys think about that we could always flip the formats around or focus on the big stuff first uh wanting to do whatever you guys like uh, because this is a really good vendor being able to skip leads being able to get the most valuable items in the game which are monster set style pages it's pretty cool. Again, some of those items you can't sell, but you can still get access to them. So that way you don't have to buy them. So if you want to save yourself potentially hundreds of millions of gold, which is how much some of these monster set helmets are worth, you're going to be able to do that. So thank you guys so much again for watching to give you guys a little bit of some, you know, cool little news. All of the equipment that I hope I need, because, you know, I never know these days, truthfully, with all the adapters needed to kind of change my recording and editing style arrive tomorrow. So I'm very excited to see how that stuff all plays out. So excited to go through that process with you, kind of tweak some of the styles and stuff that we do. And as always, we're doing our three giveaway drawings, a little bit different this month. We are doing one for a random subscriber. We're on the road to 20,000 subscribers. Huge milestone. So we're going to have to give back, obviously, to one of subscriber. And then there's a random person who answers the family feud question, which you can always find at the end of the videos. The third thing is, oh, we're going to put a random Amazon gift card on one of the videos that are posted throughout this month. And then in the community tab, I will post the actual gift card redemption timestamp uh, that I get via email afterwards. So thank you guys so much again for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye, guys. Get back!
better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. Bit of a fun family feud question for you. What is your least favorite dungeon? Now, please don't be swayed by what I've put on this video. Please answer, obviously, what you guys personally think is the worst dungeon in ESO. For whatever reason, feel free to explain if you would like to, but you don't have to if you just want to type, you know, Runes of Mazatune in the comments below. If you want to type Spindle Clutch one in the comments below, that is enough. But thank you guys so much again for your support. It's crazy to think the milestones that we've hit. Excited to see some editing changes because those of you who've been here for a while, you know that I used to edit on my phone and we're just just now really amping up the production quality. So excited to see what we can cook up with a lot of new uh, recording devices, microphones, uh, green screens, things like that, make a little more pizzazz on the video. So excited to see what I can do and hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. So thank you much and I'll catch you later. Bye guys.